and we in the building i feel like it's an echo in here today so i know that i'm late today but i came out here to hang out with the family and they got me all behind so for those of you who are new it's your girl marshawn olanio i am life i am your life and relationship strategist this is day 26 of the 30 day challenge on how to improve your relationship by 3x the amount Today's topic of discussion is how you should not or do not lose yourself in your relationship. Now, what does that actually mean to some of you all out there? Do not lose yourself in your relationship. See, as a relationship strategist, I am out here constantly helping clients. And what I'm finding is that a lot of the clients are losing themselves in their relationship. So they're, so they're making statements such as, the relationship is starting to go downhill and the usual conversation that they end up having is go something like this. You know, I don't really know who I am any longer or ever since he came into my life, I'm just a completely different person. And because I was doing everything that he wanted me to do, now I no longer know who I am. I no longer know what actually makes me happy because I was doing so much for him. And some guys do the same thing, same thing. They don't really understand who they are since they've been in that relationship. Hey, Krista. Hey, Galena. I see y'all watching. So they don't understand who they are since they've been in that relationship. And this becomes a problem, especially when that relationship starts to tank, especially when it starts to be over with. Then you're trying to figure out who you actually are, why you're still there, and what made you lose yourself throughout the course of this relationship? How did you start to lose yourself since this relationship came into fruition? And so a lot of things, I just want you to realize that you can improve your relationship by not losing yourself. Because when you do this, you are actually making your relationship that much more important, that much more fun. You're bringing something to the table because you have something to speak about. You have something to talk about. So you don't want to lose yourself in your relationship. A way that you cannot lose yourself in your relationship is to actually hang around your family and friends. This is actually what got me behind today because I'm hanging out with my people. I'm hanging out with my family. But you don't want to not hang out with the very people that you used to hang out with before you got into this very relationship. Because there are going to be times that you need an outlet. That outlet could be your family. It could be your friends. Or it could just be that you need to get away for a moment. Just to hang out with you. Just to do what you need to do. Do what you need to do and hang out with yourself. So you don't want to lose yourself in your relationship because... You want to feel just as important in your relationship. So continue to hang out with the friends that you used to hang out with or up-level your friends. Sometimes people are only around for a season. So I understand that sometimes that you have to cut back on certain friendships so you can build new ones. That's okay. But do not lose yourself in your relationship. Don't do that because if it ends then who are you going to go back to and talk to? And if you do decide to try to go back and hang out with some of those same people, guess what? They're going to be talking crap. Like, oh, now your relationship didn't work out. Now all of a sudden, you know who to call because you stop answering, you stop texting, you stop hanging out. So don't lose yourself in your relationship because you want to continue to be an individual. You want to continue to be an individual as well as building your relationship while you're in it. Another thing that you can actually do is just to spend time apart. I know that kind of goes into friends and family, but I specifically want to say spend time apart from your spouse because with your friends and family, your spouse could always be around. So think about what you want to do for yourself. What actually makes you happy? What makes you thrive? What makes you say, you know what? I actually like me. I actually like being in a relationship with myself. And so because I like being in a relationship with myself, of course I like being in a relationship with my partner, with my spouse. Spend time apart doing the things that you like to do. Even think about some of the things that you have asked your spouse or your partner to do with you that they don't want to do with you. 
find time to do them even if you have to do them by yourself or if you or if you find somebody else to do said things with i'm not saying going out there and starting a whole new relationship or anything like that no that's not what i'm saying however if there are some things that you want to do that your spouse is continuously saying no i don't want to try these things Go out and do them by yourself or find somebody else who wants to do this exact same hobby, this exact same thing, this exact same event, go to this exact same concert and then go and have a good time with them. But when you come back to the house, you'll also have something else to talk about and share with your life. Uh, excuse me, share your life with your partner or with your spouse. You'll have something to share once you come back home, especially if you are continuing to build your relationship with yourself. If you are continuing to be an individual while you are in your relationship. So if, if this relationship does not work out for whatever reason, maybe you have an epiphany after watching this series and you're like, you know what? This one really ain't working for me. Then you don't have to have that conversation to say, you know what, I actually lost myself in this relationship. I really don't know who I am in this relationship. I don't really know what I like. I don't really know what I need. Which goes into the next point, which, which is you, you want to make sure that when we, we, we talk about this thing called compromise, right, in the relationship. You do not want to always compromise and it be one-sided. Meaning you always compromise and do what your partner wants to do. Always do what your spouse wants to do because that is a sure way that you will start to lose yourself in that relationship. Because you're the only one that's doing the sacrifices. You're the only one that's doing the compromising. So think about your relationship. Are you the only one that's doing the compromises? Are you doing the majority of the compromises or is it both of you guys doing it? So you're spending time apart. You're making sure that your compromises are not one-sided. And you want to make sure that you don't give up on your hobbies. Hey, Stacy, thanks for watching. Yes, make sure that you do not give up on your hobbies, on your goals, on the things that you truly want to accomplish in life. Or just the things that you like. I mean, you like going bowling, but your boo do not like going bowling. Go bowling. This could be your time apart, doing the thing that you like to do, doing the thing that you know that brings happiness to you. See, we want our partners to be a part of all aspects of our life, but truth be told, it doesn't always come down like that. It doesn't always happen like that, but that's okay. That brings and adds more layers to your relationship. You don't always have to do the exact same thing that your partner or spouse wants you to do. They don't always have to do the things you want them to do, but that actually builds character for yourself. You continue to know who you are as an individual while you're in the relationship and you're doing stuff that you actually love and like to do. This is adding to you. It's building to you. So continue to do those things. So again, like the topic said, you do not lose yourself in your relationship. You do not end up like some of my clients who've come to me and said, I do not know who I am. I don't even know what I like. Who am I? Like if I ask some of my clients and just people in general, if I'm out having a conversation with them and I say, who are you? They say, I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I work here or have this job title or whatever. But that's not really who you are. That's a part of who you are, but who are you deep down inside? Compassionate person, loving person, honest person. Who are you? Hey, Lindy. Hey, Lisa. I see y'all both watching. Thanks for watching. Who are you deep down inside? If I was to ask you right now who you were, how would you describe yourself? Have you lost yourself in your relationship? That's something to really think about because, again, if it ends, and I'm, I'm hoping that they don't, right? Because I don't want to preach separatism or divorce or anything like that, but we all know it's a part of it. Because some of us have actually gotten into these relationships and don't really need to be in those relationships. Some of us have chose the wrong partner. I even did that. I did that, which was why this is my second marriage. Because the first partner that I chose was the wrong person. And I can talk about this very subject because I felt like I was losing myself in that previous marriage. It wasn't on purpose. But what I noticed is that every friend that he did not like... At some point, they end up leaving my life or at some point, I end up getting rid of them. 
And it wasn't that he ever came out and said, get rid of this friend. I hate this friend or I don't like this friend. But he would plant the seed. He would plant the seed of X, Y, and Z or the thing that he's seen wrong with this person. And then, again, he never said they can't be your friend or you shouldn't be their friend. But it was something about the way he was planting, planting that seed of dislike. All of a sudden, I noticed that lots of my friends was gone. And then one day, it was one friend that he was like planting the seed with. And I was just like, you know what? I'm, I'm actually not getting rid of this friend. I like this friend. One day I finally stood up for myself and I was just like, I don't know if he's doing this on purpose, but this person I actually like. I like, I like, really like this person. But I also come to that realization that I wasn't I. I was not saying that I don't want to be their friend. He was planting that seed. And then I was getting rid of my friends. And I finally decided to stand up and I was just like, you know what, actually, I, I like this person. I'm not getting rid of this person. And I do realize that once I, once I did that, he never really planted the seed with anybody else. Because I think I was just like, enough is enough. Like, am I picking my friends for you or am I picking my friends for me? Because I don't, I don't pick shady friends or people that's going to do X, Y, and Z. I just think that he was trying to do whatever, right? Because he ain't here to defend himself and I don't want to run through mud. But what I do know and understand, well... At some point in time, I was not the one who was choosing my friends or at least keeping them around because that seed was being planted. So I could talk about this because I did start to lose myself in my first marriage. I mean, am I the only one? We have a tendency to lose ourselves at some point. And a lot of times it really is the woman. Not 100%, but a lot of times it's the woman that are losing themselves. I mean, am I the only one? Have you ever lost yourself in your, pre in your relationship? And even when you think about it, have you lost yourself in this relationship? Have you stopped doing the things that you truly like to do? Have you stopped some of your hobbies because your spouse don't want to go along with you? Your, your partner doesn't want to go along with you. Your partner doesn't like say a thing that you love to do. I'm not saying that your relationship is not going to change once you, once you get into it and you have a spouse and you're building a family. And everything. I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is if it makes you happy, if it makes you happy, then you need to do it at least periodically, once a month, twice a month. So you're doing the things that feed into your soul, that feed into your spirit, even if your spouse or partner doesn't approve. It's not about that. It's not about them, really, because this particular one is all about yourself. Because if you compromise too much, hey, Marcel, I'll see you watching. Thanks for watching. If you compromise too much, all of a sudden it becomes you're in their relationship instead of y'all and y'all relationship. You're in his relationship or you're in her relationship. You're just a part of their world. They're not necessarily a part of yours, nor are they trying to make you a part of their world. So how many people out there can understand what I'm saying about losing yourself? Because we get so excited that we're in a relationship that we start to just shut everything down, shut everybody out. And that's not the way you're building a healthy romantic relationship. That's not the way that you create a happy relationship. I get it. There's the honeymoon stage. I get all of that where you guys are just looking at each other. Y'all loving on each other all day, every day. Y'all want to be around each other all day, every day. I get all of that. But after the honeymoon stage has gone away, who are you? How are you showing up in your relationship? Brianna, I see you. Thanks for watching. How are you showing up in your relationship? Are you lost? How often have you sat down and thought about how you're showing up in your relationship? Have you lost yourself in your relationship? Are you always the one who's compromising? Have you stopped your hobbies and goals? All because of the partner that you're in a relationship with. Because if you're in a relationship and that partner is never pushing you to do your thing, how are they for you? Really, how are they for you to reach the next stage in life because most of us need that push we need that push to get to the next level and if you're in a relationship your partner should be the one pushing you 
I'm not saying that they have to push you all the time because you do have to have a little bit of get up and go about yourself by yourself. But if your partner is not helping you push you along the way, like, listen, you got to get out the nest, boo. You got to go out there to the world and show the world and let the world see who you truly are. How often is your spouse for you? Or are you consistently losing yourself in the relationship that you're in? Think about it. That's the homework this week. Think about are you losing yourself or have you lost yourself in your relationship? How do you describe yourself when somebody says, who are you? Are you everybody's thing and never any of the things that you want to specifically put in there? Because it's been going on so long that you don't even realize that you're actually Xing yourself out of who you are. Something to think about, y'all. Something to think about. I was tired of losing myself in my first marriage. And when I got out, I made myself a promise that I'm never going to lose myself again. I'm never going to not know who I am in any other relationship. And I know exactly who I am. I know exactly what I want. I know exactly what I desire. And I know exactly what I deserve. From myself first, but also from my husband. We're good. He's good. I'm good. I know who I am. He knows who he is. We're both 100% people coming into the relationship. So I'm asking you, who are you? What is your percentage are you at 100% of you knowing who you are and still being that person? Are you still showing up as the 100% person or have you lost yourself? Is it slowly but surely going down the rabbit hole of you not knowing who you are? Or only being the family woman, meaning I am X's mom. So everybody know you as X's mom and not you. Because we all know, we all grow up, kids grow up. We were all once kids before. We grew up and left the nest. How are you describing yourself? Think about it, y'all. Write it down so you can see and understand who you actually are. So then it's solidified up here. And the next time somebody asks you who you are, or if you're talking to a strategist, a relationship strategist such as myself, and I ask you that question, you can tell me exactly who you are and never utter the words that you were lost in your relationship. I'll see you guys tomorrow for day 27 of the 30 day challenge on how to improve your relationship. I'll talk to you then. Deuces.